Thank you very much indeed, Minister. And uh, there's quite a few points made there. I think that highlight for me was the 85% the increase in export, which I think bodes well for all of the companies in this room as, as an aim for the, 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 the economy and, and for all of you. Um, just a couple of quick announcements and, and housekeeping. Um, I think first and foremost just to remind you about the, the future in food.ie forward slash chat and just to send us in some questions there. I can see people logging in already. Thank you very much. A reminder about the workshops that, uh, that Ronan uh, mentioned to you. Um, and a, a change in the running order this morning. Um, it will be Richard Alexander from Callar um, Ireland first and then Aoife Gillen from Foil Group and then unfortunately Gary Nugent um, from Austera Meats uh, can't join us. So Brian Kennedy from the Carbon Disclosure Project Ireland, um, who is the chair, will, will join us as a speaker for, for that section before we get to the coffee break. Um, so what I'd like to do now is um, introduce you to our next speaker, um, Richard Alexander from Calor. Um, he's the industrial manager at Calor. Um, he heads up, he's an alumni from uh, the Institute for Management Development in Switzerland, IMD, and uh, he's worked all around Europe with SHV Energy. Um, I suppose from the point of view of the companies in the room, he heads up the team that focuses on providing high efficiency and cleaner energy solutions to the Irish food production sector, and uh, in particular, um, those of you who are not on the, the natural gas grid should be uh, paying attention. Over to you, Richard. Good morning. Thank you. Just make sure this works. All right. There we go. Good morning, all. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Minister, fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I stand here this morning on behalf of Calor Ireland. We're very proud to support agriculture industry in rural Ireland. We fully endorse the Board VIA scheme that's in place in terms of carbon reduction and sustainability. And through my presentation today, I would like to show you how an energy company has actually tried to put sustainability at the heart of what we do. So I've got three basic topics. I'm going to tell you about how we built a CSR policy. I'm going to show you some examples of what we've been doing with our customer base. I've already met a few of you this morning and had speaking with you uh, from over the last number of years where you've seen excellent results and have been endorsed. Uh, and also I'm going to talk briefly about a new biofuel that's coming to Ireland, which is very relevant to Calor. Building a sustainable CSR policy, you may think that's quite hard for an energy company, but our CEO, if you can read that, in order to help our customers become more energy efficient and to help us achieve our long-term business targets, we put sustainability at the heart of what we do. That's from Tom O'Carroll, our CEO in Ireland. Our initial targets are to reduce our grid water consumption by 30% actually by the end of this month to review our resources and our infrastructure and over, overhaul all the sites we have right across the island by 2020. And we have our own carbon reduction target of reducing by 2020 by 25 percent. And to do that, we set up a cross-functional team within the company, coming from ops, coming from actually from sales, where they've got experience, knowledge, and we're using all those good ideas that come from the suggestion boxes from various parties within, within the business. And we also look expertise outside the company uh, and employ specialist companies to, including you know, I, I, our chairman, who's been very, thankfully I must say him, the work that he does for us. It's by coincidence that we're here today, uh, but I must say he's kept us in track. He's very specialist knowledge in the transport industry. So thank you, Connor. So infrastructure and technology, Basically, we've looked at logistics, transport, even our building upgrades, with a key aim of reducing our business travel, reducing our carbon footprint, and increasing our energy efficiency. So how do we go about doing that? We've used technology, digital technology. We've looked at the vehicles we're using. We're looking at what's, the mo you know, what's coming, Euro 6 for heavy goods vehicles. We work throughout the island. We can go to Donegal. We can go to Waterford, Wexford. We can go to Cork and Kerry, we can go to Amdram, we cover the, the whole of the island. If there's a road network there, we can get to it. We've introduced a new all-island communication system, including video conferencing. So we've, if there's events, even within the group, 
We use video conferencing rather than flying to foreign countries. We use this as much as possible to literally reduce the carbon footprint of every employee within the business. And we've also fully endorsed staff training. In terms of our building upgrades, we've looked at our heating, our insulation, even our air compressors. Many of you in the food industry, air compressors are a vital component for running a factory. It's unbelievable how much energy they will use. So even looking at air, air compressors and making them more efficient, that will really make a big impact on your bottom line. Rainwater harvesting, I'll show you an example next of what we've been doing. Our green tariff and electricity, and we've also introduced solar PV projects. Infrastructure, we've looked at our trucks. We've actually went using uh, new technology for Euro 6 vehicles which is running trucks on diesel, but at the same time using LPG, the only product that we actually send throughout our, our, our retail without Ireland. At the same time, you get a diesel gas truck. I, for example, I drive a gas car. So we're, we're just showing that even our staff without, throughout the company are using vehicles that run on gas that reduce your emissions in terms of carbon, but also in terms of the noxes and soxes, because they're also pollutants that we often forget about. Carbon is key for 2020, but you'll see through European legislation that the NOx and SOx regulations is really going to start to impact manufacturers. We've looked at truck aerodynamics. We've taken expertise. We've tried it, tested it, tweaked it, come up with what we think is going to work. Digital logistics. We have the fuel tanks in Ireland that actually speak to us. They tell us when they're running low. And in doing so, when you get all that information, and you use a very sophisticated computer package, it makes very efficient route dynamics. And we have schedulers who the, the majority of the insulate or the majority of deliveries are actually done by computer to work out the least miles we have to cover to drop fuel to the customer. And again, the picture on the bottom right hand side talks about the new diesel or covers the new diesel technology for Euro 6, which is the new trucks that are now being used. And as the minister rightly stated, we all need transport to get the goods from those factories in rural Ireland to the ports to get them exported on the ships or to the airports in that matter to get them exported and that's a key for growth for Ireland. So infrastructure and technology, I know it's a big screen but if you can pick up the key factors is that we've reviewed all the buildings we use and um, in a couple of cases we've managed to reduce the carbon footprint of one site by 62% and by another by 57. Some of the other some of the sites that we already had in place were, were very energy efficient, so we're still getting 20-25% savings. But we were looking at the heating. So we installed units called combined heat and power. So we generate our own electricity using gas on site. So you, you eliminate the transmission losses from power generation, from the, the grid losses throughout the network. So we're actually using the power we generate on site. We upgraded controls and sensors. We run a 24-hour business. We have people coming in night and day. When they walk through, they can, they can say, right, rather than having the heating running right through the weekend, when they walk in, the sensors pick up that they're there. They can say that they're going to be there for an hour, two hours, three hours, and the heating will only come on for one hour, two hours, three hours, depending on what their need is. It gets back off again, and only comes on if the weather gets really cold in the wintertime. We looked at the fabric. We looked at the insulation, the windows, the doors, very basic items, but they do make a big impact. We looked at our electricity generation. We've installed solar PV. We use 100% renewable electricity. And one of the unique ones was rainwater harvesting. All those lorries that we use that get dirty travel on the roads of Ireland, when they come back in, we use rainwater harvesting to clean them. We're not using fresh water from the mains. So those are little items. In terms of people and activities within our business, we bring in guest speakers to educate our staff. Very simple but effective items. We introduced, you may laugh at it, water bottles for our staff. So that's totally eliminated the need for us plastic cups and machines. They, all have, they can all fill up whenever they need. Cycle to work scheme, our CEO has committed to cycling to work at least 50 times a year, once a week, even through the winter, he will cycle to work and reduce his carbon footprint. Again, the commitment is coming from the top of the business. And recycling, 
very simple, paper, cardboard, whatever. We try to eliminate every bit of waste that we have and training. So far we've assessed what we've saved 45,000 kilograms or 45 tons of carbon dioxide just by educating people to drive in a better manner rather than this fast acceleration, hard braking. Just a smoother driving will increase the efficiency of the vehicles that they're driving. So again, lots of simple measures, but they do add up over a period of a year. But that was I was talking about in-house. In terms of external, there's a comp there's a, a campaign in Europe known as the Free Campaign, and it's known as Future Rural Energy in Europe. And it's to stimulate stimulate debate in rural like, communities right across Europe, France, Germany. As such, Color Ireland we endorse this program, and it stimulates the debate so that the countryside can play its part in carbon <coughs> reduction. But it also makes sure that we get speaking to the likes of the ministers who help dictate policy and ensure that we, we show that we have an impact on government policy. We're doing things in schools. There's a picture of our CEO with a couple of winners where we have tell the future. We're asking kids in the schools, how do they see that communities can reduce their carbon footprint in factories and homes and businesses, even in their own schools? We've introduced university debates of quite uh, nervous discussions where fracking in Ireland, is it a friend or foe? Water, wave and wind power, is it a viable energy solution? Nuclear energy, that's a whole new topic. But we're asking the opinions of the youth of tomorrow to tell us what they think because we are an energy supplier in rural Ireland. We want to know what our customers think about energy policy. Well, that's about what Keller's doing. What have we been doing for our customers? I've just put up three examples, and rather than me speak, I've picked a couple of them to tell you what they've been doing in terms of using Keller to achieve their sustainability targets. My name is Aidan Murphy and I'm the co-owner and head brewer at Galway Hooker Brewery in Oramore County Galway. We're a microbrewery, we were set up in uh, 2006. We've just moved in here into our new premises about two months ago. It was initially set up by my cousin and myself. We uh, started with just one product, an Irish pale ale. We expanded our range into various different kinds of seasonal beers. We also have a stout. From initially starting with eight pubs in the country, we now sell the beer in approximately 120 pubs nationwide. We also now bottle both our ale and our stout, and that would be also widely available in, in most independent off-licenses throughout the country. Brewing is a very high energy dependent process. We use a lot of um, hot water, so we need to heat that up from ambient temperature up to boiling point. Typically, we would be heating about 10,000 litres of water a day, and we would also be boiling about four to 8,000 litres of beer for about 70 to 80 minutes. So we're always obviously looking at ways to increase our efficiency, reduce our carbon footprint, and reduce our costs. Caller were able to come in with their engineers and help us tailor a boiler and the heating system, which was appropriate for the size of our brewery and the processing that we use. Before we moved into our new brewery, we were using electricity in our old premises to heat water. It was very inefficient and very expensive. So in the new brewery, we purchased a, a steam boiler and uh, that gives us a lot more flexibility in the way we brew, it gives us a lot more temperature control in the processing. It also allowed us to, to heat our water and our beer in a more efficient manner. Gas was the most efficient way for us to, to do that. We contacted Caller to help us get set up, so they were able to provide us with all of our requirements. The benefit of the telemetry is that we don't have to worry about ever running out of gas. It's always there, so that's one less headache for us. But I think the biggest advantage of using Caller gas is the reduction in our costs. You know, using gas is, is a lot more efficient than electricity the way we used to do it, so the single biggest benefit is the you know, reduced cost in the processing.
And I'll move on to a totally separate sector, agriculture. My name is Fergal Flynn, uh, I'm based in Sowers County, Dublin. We work together as a partnership here with my brothers. We farm approximately 1,500 acres of crops between potatoes and cereals. Today we're drying uh, barley and normally we have to dry about 2,500 tonne of barley per season. And this year for the first time uh, we switched to colour gas. We looked into it and the figures came up that gas was going to be really big saving. It was very easy to change over. We actually had the dryer working from diesel to gas within two hours. But they had pipe work done the day of, a few days before and a tank installed on the farm. Since we've been working with it, it's been great. Every day I used to spend maybe 35, 40 minutes filling the grain dryer with diesel. So now the tank just, it all looks after itself. I have no issues with the burner. It's just once you press go, the burner lights up because it's gas using the fumes. But it's been very positive. When you're cutting out the issues, like if you had diesel spillage or anything, the gas is piped 25 metres away from the dryer, where the diesel tank sits on the grain dryer. Anything can happen, you can have a leak or that. You know, which is it's close to the area of contamination, so that's all done away with. I've no emissions from the gas, which you, you have from diesel fuel. Restrictions, you know, put in by the EU. You have to have no toxins in your grain, so which is great. From the old diesel burner, I couldn't get as much heat out of my burner where I'm getting more heat out of the gas. So I've done my, my drying cycle. It's down by about 15 to 20 minutes per load as well, which I'm noticing, which is making a big difference over the whole day. You can nearly get an extra load in at the end of the evening due to it being drier, you know, the grain being dry quicker, which is an awful difference as well because I, I can dry up to maybe 180, 190 tonne a day, you know, compared to 160 or what it was. The support I got from, from the burner end of it, you know, the fitting of it, the customer service after it, and then um, Larry in the sales end of it was super. Well, after being non gas still for six weeks, I just can't believe that I, I didn't switch years ago to it because of the convenience of it and the cleanliness of it. You know, it's very clean to work with. Diesel this year is the lowest it's been in in seven years, and it's still going to be a saving for me to be on gas. That was a couple of customers actually telling you in two different sectors what they've been doing over the last couple of years to reduce their carbon footprint and become more efficient and become more sustainable. Now I'm going to tell you about a new biofuel that's coming to Ireland next year. We have only a month to go before we hit 2016. 2016 will be the launch of the new biofuel. A number of years ago, we put sustainability at the heart of what we do. And they talk about blue sky vision. Well, we actually took that to the extreme. And we went to speak to a company called Neste, in, based in Finland. Neste produce a very unique biofuel for the fuel aircraft. And it meets very high tolerances in terms of you know, being safe to use and reducing their carbon footprint. They have several biofuel refineries based around the world. The, the closest one being Rotterdam. They have one in Finland and one in Singapore. And as part of SHV Energy Group, uh, our CEO Ken Wilson, who's from Monaghan, negotiated a deal with Neste that as part of the production of the biofuel that's used for aircraft. At the back end of that, they would also produce 
a new biopropion or bio LPG. So that is unique in terms of global. There's nowhere else that has actually completed this process as yet. Trials have already been completed, proved that it works, and now we're upscaling it. So biopropion is coming to Europe. The neat thing is, it's a low carbon biofuel. It's identical to what we actually currently sell, but the benefit is that there's up to 90% reduction in your carbon footprint. There's a picture of the guys that are based at the refinery, gearing up for uh, the introduction of the biofuel. Literally, it should be on stream by September next year. So Neste, SHV, and Calor Ireland, we're introducing a cleaner, available, and a renewable product. Neste is the first to produce bio LPG commercially. SHV is going to be the first company to sell it commercially, and Calor will be the first to supply bio LPG into Ireland. It's got all the green, cred green credentials. Any equipment that's currently fueled by oil, natural gas, or even LPG, in any industry, food and drink, including steam, hot water, processed burners, even transport like forklift trucks. I know many of you have factories and plants within the natural gas network. Also use LPG trucks on your site. It can be used for that as well. And why do it? There's the carbon footprint, for example, of, of three other oil-based fuels. Calor LPG, by far, is the lowest carbon footprint. But when you bring in Calor Bio LPG, you can see the difference. It's the very small green line down at the bottom where you're literally achieving 90% savings. In fact, the UK government, the Department of Transport, have actually made a final submission that they declare 93.2% sustainable. Uh, and that's very recent. They have analyzed it. Their experts have looked at it. And they're coming back with this figure of 93.2. So finally, if you're interested in bio LPG, come and speak to the team. We have a stand down at the back of this hall and also in the side hall. Come and speak to us if you're interested in a bio LPG product. Or if you don't have time today, just email us on biolpg at calorgas.ie. We actually have a hamper of goods produced from our customers. So if you leave your details with us, you have a chance to take that home with you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Richard.